what we're going to do is a peritoneal dialysis exchange. And um, this patient is a Lourdes patient, which uses Fresenius as an outpatient. Um, they use Fresenius equipment, but when they come into the hospital, we use Baxter equipment. So, first of all, the Baxter, uh, the, the Fresenius um, tubing, 10 cuff tubing adapter has to be changed, and then we can do uh, the exchange. Your patient as well as the nurse has to have a mask on. And now all I'm doing, this is a clean area, this is not a um, sterile area, and I'm just exposing the adapter. Um, this here is actually the Tenkoff catheter, and this is the titanium uh, adapter on the Tenkoff catheter. All of this, this is not disposable. This is actually goes into the peritoneal space. This from, from this blue area on, this is the titanium, from this blue area on is a disposable piece. This area here is not disposable. So what we're gonna do from here is put an adapter on here so that um, we can use the equipment that we have in the hospital. The equipment we have in the hospital is Baxter, and again, this disposable piece here is Fresenius. This is the Fresenius adapter that goes on to our Baxter equipment. It sounds crazy, but eventually when they get all the contracts figured out, we won't have to do this, but right now we do. All right, we placed the chucks here just so that we could see the area better. And I'm gonna take my connector. This large white cap here, this is the stay, stay safe adapter. This is going to attach to this one here. So I'm gonna take my female connector, or the, the, the cap off first, which is gonna expose the female connector and I'm going to open this one and you can see your male connection back right all the way down in there and I'm going to attach that. Now this will be able to uh, adapt to our Baxter our Baxter mini cap extended life PD transfer set. <laughs> Say that again. These are disposable. Now This one, the blue cap, comes off, exposing a female connection. And this is going to come off and expose a male connection. You always expose your male connection last, because it's the easiest one to uh, contaminate. Again, let's backtrack and make sure that your patient's uh, clamp that is on their extension is clamped off. Just because if that's open for some reason, when you make your connections here, you're going to end up with peritoneal fluid mm -hmm. coming out. So we just always make sure that this is clamped, which it is. Now we have this connection ready to go on our transfer set. Then you're going to get your dialysis transfer set. It's going to have an empty bag. The reason we have an empty bag is because Theoretically, your abdomen or your peritoneum is going to have sometimes two or three liters of effluent in there, and that's going to drain into your empty bag. So you're going to want to drain the patient first before you use your dianeal to fill the patient. So the empty bag is going to go on your clean surface on the floor, right here. We use, on your bag, there's a, a surface that's real clear and there's a surface that's cloudy. The reason for that is you want to be able to see the effluent in the bag. Um, you want to see through the clear part of your bag to the, 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 um, the cloudier part to make sure that you can see whether your effluent is cloudy or not. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's that clear area. So the clear area, you're going to face up. 
I'm going to put the clear area or the clear part of the bag on the floor and that's going to leave two connections. This is your Y connection. Obviously this part, it looks exactly like the um, thing that we took off of here. So you can see those are the connections that are going to go together and that's this. You want to make sure they're both clamped here and here. You want to make sure all of your tubing is clamped. This is actually going to go into your dye needle bag. I'm just not going to spike the bag just yet. I'm going to make the connection for you to drain first and then we'll worry about spiking the bag to fill. I'm going to expose, here's your male connection. I'm going to expose my female connection first. and then expose my male connection and sterilely put those together. Now this here has a clamp on it as well. I'm going to open this clamp and I'm going to open this clamp and see by gravity I'm going to open this one as well. You can see that the one that spikes that spikes our dianeal bag, I'm not opening that clamp. I'm just opening this clamp, which is going to see if he has any peritoneal fluid to drain out. So that if we determine that he doesn't have any effluent to drain, we may have to put some dianeal in, let it dwell for a little bit, and then drain it to be able to do a culture. So I'm going to expose again my female connection and then my male connection. I'm going to sterilely spike my bag. And I'm not going to put it in for a dwell until I ask the physician what it wants to do. Okay? So this, and it'll just, well, it'll just go in by gravity, hopefully. All right, our patient only in, was able to infuse or instill 500 mLs of dianeal into his peritoneal space and um, he probably reabsorbed that 500 mLs. From last so, night? From last night. So trying to drain from his peritoneal space is going to be difficult because there's not going to be a whole lot in there. Um, so what we're going to do now is instill our dianeal and let it dwell for a little bit and that's how we're going to get our um, effluent for a culture to assess whether you have peritonitis or not. So it's important to make sure that your drainage system is clamped off first before you open up your dianeal line otherwise your dianeal is going to go right into your drainage bag. It's just going to take the path of least resistance. It's not going to go to you, even though you're open. It's going to go right into your drainage bag. So now we're going to open up our dianeal. And our hope is that this will infuse. And it can infuse right in. There is no, you can see there's no roll clamp on here to control the rate of the um, infusion of dianeal into the, the peritoneal cavity. It can go quick. A half hour. What we're going to do now, and actually the physician is going to determine the dwell time, and that's the amount of time that the, the dianeal is in the peritoneal space. And then we're going to drain him. You're going to unlock the clamp, go into the Tenkoff catheter. You're going to unlock this clamp. Make sure that your infusion clamp is clamped and then you're going to unlock your drain clamp and we're going to hope to get some drainage. When the dialysis treatment is finished, you're going to replace uh, a cap on top of the tubing. If they're going home, you're going to replace it with a Fresenius cap. If they're staying in the hospital, a Baxter cap.